Happy Friday. This is Audrey, and I want to come to you as often as possible on Friday with a couple of Dataverse mini tips. Today, I want to talk about the common data model, and you're going to see me talking about this quite a bit because I think it's misunderstood for those of us that don't have a background in either dynamics or general customer relationship management or CRM systems. Um, but the common data model, again, not to be confused with common data service, which is the older name for Dataverse, it is literally what it says there. That title is the most perfect title I have ever seen. It is a data model or a schema that is common across applications. So when you think about customer relationship management, you think about these types of schemas where you have something for recording the customer where, who that you're working with, something to enter the contacts that are related to that customer agency or company, um, activities and so forth. These, this is a common schema. And so Dataverse gives this common schema because it knows that all businesses will have to have some type of CRM, and these are the most typical tables they will need. So when using the common data model, keep in mind, this will save you time and it will facilitate integrations. When I talk about integrations, think as broadly as possible because the common data model is well known. Our mini tip today starts with a count but you'll see me do others along the way, okay? So let's start with a count today. I'm going to take you into Power Apps. Uh, let's uh, Alt-Tab over to Power Apps real quick. And you'll see that I am in a preview uh, tenant, uh, a demo preview tenant. And so if you have a preview uh, uh, in environment where you, you, you can see preview, then you'll see the same UI that you'll see here because this is our new uh, uh, user interface that is uh, out in preview today. So only preview uh, customers will see that. And so um, that's not the point of this video though. What I wanna show you is uh, what you want to do in order to kind of understand why this account table can easily be reused, all right? So first I'm going to go to the columns of the account table and just kind of look and see what we have here. And this is, I think, a little bit intimidating for people sometimes that uh, if you look, uh, I have so many fields in this account table. And many people say, I don't need all that. And they look at it as overkill and they get, they just go make a, a custom table. Don't think that way. You don't have to use what you don't need. Having too much is a little bit better than not having enough, right? Um, you can always not use anything you don't need and hide it in your apps. Okay. So don't worry about any extra stuff. What you want to worry about is how beautifully this table already has a bunch of data you need. Every company relationship you have, you're going to need to store the company name, the address of the company. You're going to need to store things like uh, what country are they in, some email addresses and things like that for the actual company. And you consider this your top level table for that customer relationship. Now, I do want to stress when I say customer relationship for you Dataverse geeks, I am not talking about table relationships. I am talking about people relationships. Our company has a relationship with people in another company. Okay. So this table facilitates me storing the company details and then automatically it has all the relationships I need for adding contacts that I associate with in that company, adding activities that I associate with that in that company, adding um, even meetings and emails. It's just automatically built for me. Why would I want to start from scratch? Now, what kind of companies might you want to use the account table for? You might want to use it for um, 
you might want to use it for your actual customers. Nothing wrong with that. That's where it usually starts anyway, but you could also use it for your partners and your um, suppliers. Those are all relationships that you manage with other customers that also need kind of like a relationship management tool. How do you manage your vendors? How do you manage your, um, uh, supply your, uh, sorry, partner relationships. So notice what I did here, getting to my mini tip is I added a column called metadata. See it right here. This is the only custom column that I added. I didn't add anything else. I didn't change anything else because the rest is perfect. All right. Now in this metadata column, I set it up as a single line of text. Now, because I'm going to use this column to identify what type of company relationship this is with me, I could have used an option set or a choice list, but I chose not to. Again, I'm trying to facilitate integrations across everything, Power Automate, Power Apps, Power BI, everything, right? And so I'm gonna keep this column simple to make any queries very simple, all right? So I leave it single line of text. Everybody on my team that's entering these companies, they know, and we can even automate that part, we'll talk about another day, but they know when it's a customer, when it's uh, a partner, and when it's a supplier. Those are the three types of accounts that I'm going to say that we fictitiously have understand that as I build apps, if I'm in a customer app, I can automate that when it submits the data to Dataverse, I can automate the population of the metadata tag to match the type of app I'm in. Keep that in mind, all right? So you don't necessarily have to teach everybody about this little hidden column and you don't have to show it anywhere, all right? Now, after I did that, then I went into my account data and I populated that metadata field. And so whenever it was a partner, it got a partner tag, real simple. When it was a customer, it got a customer tag. When it was a supplier, it got a supplier tag. So now I have my table with all the kinds of accounts in it and each account basically has a metadata flag. Again, this can be automated once you start publishing apps for partners, customers, and supplier relationships, okay? So now the next thing I have to do is create the filtered view, right? And so here we already have, we have, we have several accounts views here. You can just clone these, right? So I'm gonna, you notice that I have already cloned active accounts and I've called it active customers. And let me show you what I did so you can see. I went into the active accounts, which is built in. You always have it. And I went into edit mode. And all I did up here at the top, save is gray because this is already saved. But I'm going to drop this down and choose save as. And this is where I can rename this to customer accounts. Keeping the integrity of this beautifully designed solution intact. Now, the next thing I'm going to do after I change the name is I'm gonna add a filter. So here, I'm gonna add a row to my filter and look for that metadata tag. And then whatever kind of app I'm building this view for, I will, uh, I will put that in there. And now this view will become a customer view filtered by that metadata tag which means, and I've already done this, so we didn't have to do it. Now, when I build my apps, by the way, if you're using the preview of this and you want to build an app from a table, you'll see the create an app at the top in preview. But I'm gonna, uh, the other way you can do this is the, the way we've been doing it, is just choose blank app from the create tab. And from the blank app, you can click Dataverse model driven and hit create. Now I'm not going to do that just because this is a mini tip. I'm going to keep this video short, but clicking create allows you to add all the tables you need into that model driven app solution. And any relationships that are already built in will instantly work. This is the time saver peeps. So keep this in mind. 
All right, let's open up the app that I made called Customers. Let's hit Edit and show you the last thing you have to do. Now, this is a simple app. I only have the accounts table in here, but definitely you would want to include all the other ones because you get a lot of built-in functionality by adding contacts, activities, emails, uh, notes, and so forth to your app, right? But I'm just going to show you here when you first build this app, when you first generate it, it's going to have all the views here, all the views. And this is not what we want. We want our customers to not have to figure out which view to look at. So what we're going to do, instead of letting it stay be all views and then telling everybody, use active customers. No, that's too much effort. No, ain't nobody got time for that. Click on account and then click on account view, right? Now, when you click on account view, every view that you list here on the right, I hope you can see that, is the view that will be shown in the app. So this area over here on the right is, is huge. And you can add as many views as you have in the Dataverse tables that you have generated this app with. Now, just keep in mind, before you start building your app, you might want to handle your views and your forms first. All right, so I've added the active customer views, which means that the only view that will show once I save and publish is active customers. Now we'll give you a heads up just for sanity's sake. When you add this view, you will still see all the views here. You will still see them because the app won't dynamically make that change, right? But what you wanna do is save and then publish and then when you save and publish, now when you run the app, right? Um, or if you close this and come back and play, then you will see only one view. But just note that the first time you do this, you'll be surprised that all the views are still there. Don't worry. When you save, publish, and play, um, there will only be one. Now, there's only one exception that occurs every now and then. Every now and then, You'll run the app, you'll save, publish, and run it, and you'll still see all the views, and you'll go, hmm, I did everything Audrey said. Well, we cache sometimes. So remember that the first time you run the app, you want to clear your cache. So just do a control key, hold down control, and hit your refresh button, and that will clear your cache, and you'll see it kick in. Note, before I leave this to show you, I'm going to show you that you can do the same thing for forms. By default, you got all of them, but you can choose which forms you want to limit to your app. So think about this. I can have a customer app all coming from the account table, but filtered down to customers. I can have a partner app all filtered down to partners, and I can have a supplier app all filtered. Now those could be three apps, or I can have one app that actually manages those filters based on my navigation components, right? So this can get really cool. So basically, let's just go look at this. Uh, I'm just going to open the table. Again, remind you, after you set up, uh, you, you add them at the column, you add your customer types or your account types or company types. Then you create the views and the forms just by cloning the others, right? Clone and revise, right? And then you add those views and forms to your uh, model-driven apps. And life is just wonderful. Again, if you ever come in here and you see more views than the last thing you did in your editing authoring tool, then just hold down control and hit the refresh key. That will clear the cache and then it will kick in beautifully. And it's really important to think about what views you're showing your customers. Don't give them more than they really need. And always default to the view that you assume your customers will need the most, okay? So that's my mini tip for this Friday. Look forward to tips like this on Fridays coming forward. Have a great weekend. Talk to you soon.